Welcome back to the Upper Elementary Simplified Podcast. You are listening to episode 64. And last week, you heard the first part of my chat with Kristen from All That Teacher Sparkle. I mentioned in that episode that our conversation was so good that it got too long. So I decided to break it up into two different episodes. So today, we are picking up right where we left off last week. So if you didn't catch last week's episode, you should definitely go back and give that a listen and then come back to this one. As a refresher, I am going to introduce Kristen again by telling you a little bit about her. Kristen was a classroom third through fifth grade reading teacher for almost 20 years. Her goal was always to create a comfortable environment where students felt loved and supported, yet also instill in them a desire to learn. She used unique teaching methods and creative lessons to capture her students' interest and help them grow into more confident readers. Currently, she is helping teachers regain their love of teaching by writing blog posts, featuring her favorite classroom ideas, and creating resources that teach standards in a fun way. Welcome to Upper Elementary Simplified, the podcast where busy and overwhelmed teachers find thoughtful ideas to get students engaged in meaningful learning experiences. Hi, I'm Dana Rodebush, former fifth grade classroom teacher and founder of Teacher Tech Studio. I'm here to share practical tips and strategies that will help you grow as an educator. If you are a tired upper elementary teacher searching for ways to cut down your planning time while boosting student engagement, you are in the right spot. Are you ready? Let's simplify. So I would love it if you could also tell us about a specific time in your classroom when you felt that you had just absolutely nailed student engagement. Okay, so this is like probably my favorite story ever of teaching. (laughs) Okay, so Christmas of uh, 2019, um, that was my last year in the classroom. I had, for the record, the perfect class, like Mm. 75 kids, three groups that rotated, but the whole, the the group as a whole was just wonderful anyway. They were just a joy to teach, but (laughs) we were having an ugly sweater day. And I prided myself, of course, you know this, about being like the most creative for Ugly Sweater Day. So I decided to go a different direction that year, though. And so I dressed up as Elf on the Shelf, like the red tights, the red top, the white skirt, everything. And so I I came in to school. And of course, I had cafeteria duty that morning. So the entire school got to see me. (laughs) But... My job was to, like, make sure all the kids were, like, facing front in line, helping them get through to get their trays quickly. Well, here's this elf, and I didn't talk to any of the kids. I just smiled and, like, did facial expressions and all that, Um, and it was so much fun. Well, by the time that I got to my classroom, all my kids had told each other, you know, oh, Miss Higdon is dressed up like an elf. She sparkles the elf, you know, so... When I came in, my kids came up to me and they were like, uh, you know, what's going on? And I, I don't know. And I wouldn't say anything. So one of my kids said, are you not going to talk to us all day? And I swear there was a visible light bulb like popped up over my head. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am not going to talk all day. Like, how am I going to do this? This is epic. So I immediately you know, but like didn't make any noises. But I love it. I love my kids it. are like, oh my gosh, she's not going to talk all day. So as the kids are doing their morning routine, they're getting ready for the day. I'm like, how am I going to do this? So we were supposed to do theme notes and I was supposed to read How the Grinch Stole Christmas that day. So I'm like, I have this notebook that I had done the, the previous year. Like I always do a notebook with my kids, like as we're doing our like interactive notebooks. So I had that one from last year. So I just pulled that out real quick, like took two shots of the actual notes pages, slapped it into Google Classroom, typed up like what we were going to do, you know, and I just pantomimed and got the kids like 
they took their notes, they wrote everything down, color cut and glued, put everything in. And like, I'm up, like walking around and stuff, never said a word to anybody. And when it came time for me to read the story, instead of reading it, I just like pulled up YouTube and there was a read aloud right there with the pages. Of course. So uh -huh. yep. I didn't have to do anything like as far as talking wise. And then the kids were like, amazing. Like everybody was on task the entire day. Nobody was um, rude or nasty. Like there were n literally not one behavior management problem all day long. The kids were the most angelic I've ever seen a group of children in my life. <laughs> and so I did that with fun. Yes. And I did it with three classes and it was the same with all three classes. We oh went to goodness. lunch. We went to PE. We went to recess. We went to everything. And I did not speak a single word. That and is so funny. <laughs> it was the most amazing day. Like, like I said, it was just perfect. And so at the end of the day, I had bus duty, of course. So I'm out there. I did not speak one word at bus duty. And oh even my. the kids in other grade levels were like, <laughs> to see what I was doing. And it was, I don't that know. It was so funny. unlike <laughs> anything I've ever seen before. And I swear I'll never see anything like that again. It was that the perfect is so day. Cool. And you know what? Those kids still remember that and will remember that forever. They will. <laughs> they probably tell that story themselves that is so cool I love it that is so funny wow well they're in eighth uh, yeah and they're in eighth grade Dana and they still are like hey, Miss Dan, Dan, did Snickles come this year oh my <laughs> and I'm not even in the classroom <laughs> yes oh that is so cool I love it I love it so can you give the teachers listening maybe some ideas about how they can turn ordinary activities into something different and fun. Okay. So if you have a traditional activity, just kind of think about why could it be boring? What could kids potentially think is boring about this activity and fix that proactively? Um, if you need kids to copy vocabulary words, ask yourself, like, why would my kids find this boring? And Honestly, you're going to have a million answers pop up, right? Um, we have uh, writing too much, right? Sitting still for a long time. Um, no talking at all. And so those are the things that, um, I mean, it's just, those are easy to fix if you think about how you can fix those. So why not try giving kids a type list, you know? Mm -hmm. Put a few pictures in there. Like I used to hand draw my pictures on my vocabulary and they were really fun. awful, but it was How a fun, it was funny to talk about, you know, I'd poke fun at my own pictures and the kids would be sweet about it, but put a few pictures on there. Um, let students sit in their space place and draw the rest of the pictures. Then they can discuss those sketches. Like, why did you draw this certain picture to go with this word? And they have to explain it to a partner. Uh, have them make up hand motions to go over the definitions. Mm. Like, do you really have to have them write every single thing down for a 45 minute stretch? Like, so, that's too many words, dude. Like, ugh, I would find that boring. So uh, just try to come up with a way that, how is it boring? How can I fix it? Um, with grammar, like I had to teach independent and dependent clauses, which again, wasn't a big deal to me, but my kids hated it. So mm. one day I'm teaching this and, I just start bust out singing Beyonce, <laughs> independent woman, you know, uh, oh you know, the, the house I live in, I bought it, uh, the clothes I'm wearing, I bought it. And so I explained dependent clauses are dependent on other words to make a complete sentence. But if you are an independent clause, you don't need no other words because you are a sentence all on your own. And my kids were like, because I just started busted singing, you know, but I knew it was going to be boring to just like write regular notes. So we did mm -hmm. do some notes, but mm -hmm. the song, like that made it so much more fun. So, and they remembered it. Of they remembered course they the did. difference between independent and dependent. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure, cause that is a, that's a pretty difficult concept for a lot of kids. I mean, it's once you get the hang of it, it's, it makes sense, but it is a difficult concept and they are going to continue to use that, 
you know, build on that skill in later English classes. And so bet those kids are still going back and singing that song in their head. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, you're welcome, Beyonce. You're welcome. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, but yeah. So, um, like, if it's a worksheet, you know, and you're just kind of having a dull day, it's gray and dreary outside. Well, just do three examples together, and then have the like the students do three to four on their own, and then when they're done with that, they get to work with a partner to finish the last few questions. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. just something to liven it up a little bit, and it's almost like putting a little carrot before the horse, you know, Mm -hmm. like if they know they're going to get to work with a partner or we've already done a couple together, it doesn't feel so much. They still did the work. We just did it together. And so Mm -hmm. that's so helpful for some kids. Um, Reading logs used to be a huge bone in my, I don't know what you call that, a huge uh, thorn in my side. That's what I meant to say. Uh, but honestly, it's like reading logs were not very right. efficient in my classroom. And so I just was like, how can I change this? This stinks. Like the ones who are going to do it are doing it. The ones who are not are, are the ones who need to be. So I just started using sticky notes instead. And we I made like a whole folder. We kept our little sticky notes on little recording sheets. Uh, if they brought their sticky note back the next day, completed, then They got to like actually read with a partner that morning and share their sticky note. And if they didn't read, well, it wasn't the end of the world. You know, they could go ahead and do their reading and do their sticky note before school. And if there was time left over, then, you know, they might get a chance to read with somebody. But honestly, that really motivated kids to want to do like even the kids who had like zero help at home. They knew they could do it at school with me and I I could help them like in the afternoons or in the mornings. And my reading like outside of school, like skyrocketed and that had not been the case my entire career. (laughs) So just coming up with something different, just, I don't know, just made it finally something that worked for me. I love that. I love that. You have given us so many great ideas to build student engagement and motivation. I'm so thankful that you have been here to help us with that. Is there anything else that you would like to add that we haven't already talked about? Sure. Um, People tend to get really like, ooh, about creative teaching. Like, oh, that sounds so stressful. Um, But it shouldn't be stressful. It should be fun and it should make your job more enjoyable, not more stressful. <laughs> so <laughs> creativity should come also like from your natural personality. So don't take away from this. Oh my gosh, I've got to dress like an elf if I want to be creative. If you want to dress like an elf, go for it because it was so stinking fun. But if that is not your thing and you are like, good for you, Kristen, <laughs> don't do it. Like, don't feel like you have to do things the way that I do it in order to be creative. If you love knitting, then bring knitting into your classroom, you know, Mm -hmm. like show the kids how you knitted, write out directions for how to do a certain stitch or how to get started and have your kids read them and then do it. You know what I'm saying? Like bring in the stuff you're good at. So gardening, um, maybe you could make some raised beds outside of your classroom and have your kids grow a garden. Um, I, that is not me. <laughs> I have friends who have done that. And um, because that was what they were good at. Um, maybe you're a super amazing cook. Bring some no-bake cooking. Like have your kids read directions from recipes to make um, something that you could do and like with a classroom with just a microwave or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, bring pictures. Like maybe you like to travel. Bring pictures of a vacation you went on and and like you're reading books about Paris and wherever and you show your pictures from when you went to Paris. Like you can be creative in your own way and it doesn't have to be the same way that I'm creative, you know? Um, You don't have to work so hard to come up with like knock their socks off kind of stuff every single day because that's going to burn you out. Mm -hmm. So Don't feel like you have to do big, huge things every single day. You can still be creative in tiny ways. You're not stressful. Um, Most of the time, just making the teaching more fun for you is going to make the learning more fun for your students. 
if you're interested, you're having fun, your kids are going to see that and they're going to get excited too. And that's really what teaching creatively is all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's such great advice. So would you go ahead and tell my audience where they can find you if they want to connect with you? Yeah. So I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, all that teacher sparkle. Um, my teachers pay teachers store is also all that teacher sparkle. <laughs> and my <laughs> website is all that teacher sparkle.com. <laughs> so I'm the same everywhere. Um, and I would love to connect with teachers. It is so much fun. And a lot of times, like when you're trying to be creative and you're, you can't be, and I've, I've had that happen to me talking through things with another teacher has like, boom, just, we just spark ideas back and forth. And that's what teachers need. They need mm -hmm. that spark back and forth with, with other teachers to get those ideas rolling. So some of my best ideas have come from just talking to my team and be like, what am I going to do for this? I don't know. And they'll say one thing and then boom, that's all it took. Absolutely. So awesome. Definitely reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Well, I will definitely link all of those places in the show notes for this episode. And we absolutely appreciate you being here, Kristen. Thank you so, so much. Oh, I had so much fun. I had a really great time. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. Thank you so much. After talking with Kristen during this interview, it was 100% apparent to me that this girl should be offering coaching to teachers about how to incorporate student engagement into their classrooms. I'm telling you, she is a wealth of knowledge and has an idea for engaging students for any topic imaginable. After we spoke, I told Kristen that she needs to be offering coaching services, and she was like, well... Actually, I am working on that a little bit. So I want to invite you to check out the information page in the show notes to see how you can connect with Kristen. I promise you will not be disappointed. If I ever go back to the classroom, she will be the first person I look up. Be sure to check out the Dog Days Digest to find lots of great inspiration to get your teacher brain thinking this summer. See you next week. Yay! Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Upper Elementary Simplified. I hope you were able to take away something useful that will help you grow as a teacher. I do have a quick favor to ask before you go. If you are enjoying the podcast, please let me know by leaving me a review. It really does make a difference because reviews impact search results, which helps me to expand my reach to other educators. Plus, I love to read my listeners' comments. Until next time, keep life simple.